I would like to call to order the Monroe County Solid Waste Management District Board of Directors meeting for May 13th, 2021. And we will begin with a roll call. Munson? Here. Thomas? Here. Githens? Here. Hamilton? Here. Piedmont Smith? Here. Jones? Here. Swafford? We have a quorum. Thank you. Our agenda today is filled with um, minutes of various types and uh, including a lot of draft minutes. And uh, we do have, we include these in the packet to keep you up to date on what the executive committee has been doing on behalf of the board. And most of you already know this because out of the hmm, six uh, meeting minutes, uh, these pertain to the, the search for uh, our new controller. And this is the perfect time to welcome Miss Kathy Martin to uh, her very first board of directors meeting. So welcome, Kathy, glad to have you with us. Thank you. Glad to be here. So when everybody uh, gets back to more normal activities um, and you get a chance to go by the district, I hope you'll stop in and meet Kathy in person. So um, anyway, most of those minutes are for your information and we do not need to vote on them because the executive committee has not even voted on them. And we will take that up at our next meeting. So we have um, uh, minutes that do require approval and they are from the joint meeting of the uh, board and the uh, CAC that was held last January. And these are delayed a bit because we wanted the CAC to see the minutes as well. So may I have a motion for uh, the January 14th minutes, please? I move approval of the minutes from the Joint Board of Directors and CAC <coughs> meeting of January 14th, 2021. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? We'll have a roll call vote then, please. Hamilton. Yes. Jones. You're muted. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry. Githens. Yes. Thomas. Uh, I'm going to abstain because I did not have a chance to watch the meeting. Munson. Yes. Piedmont Smith. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. We have three more sets of minutes. Uh, Ms. Piedmont Smith, would you provide us with the motion, please? Yes, may I do these in one motion? I think that would be a great idea. Okay. Um, I move approval of the Board of Director meeting minutes of April 8th the Board of Director Executive Session Minutes of April 15th, and the Board of Director Meeting Minutes of April 15th. Second. Thank you. Board members, do you have any uh, comments or uh, corrections on these minutes? Seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote, please. Piedmont Smith? Yes. Thomas? Sorry, um, I'm gonna abstain again. Thank you. Jones? Yes. Munson? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Githens? Yes. Motion passes. Well, thank you. We're done with that housekeeping now. Uh, let us turn to uh, the report from our controller. 
And we'll begin with uh, cash flows. Ms. Martin. The cash flow summary is on page 21 of the packet. And that lists the uh, balances in the cash accounts as of April 30th. And the operating balance at that time was $1,146,282.40. The savings account balance is $1,040,080. The closure bond debt balance is $7,741.16. The capital balance is $45,413.60. And the landfill post-closure account Balance is $760,832.95. That savings account was opened on April 1st uh, with a million dollars that was transferred from the operating checking account. And uh, that uh, transfer is included in the year to date expenses that's listed there. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, the um, on pages 29 and 30, you have a listing of the pre-approved claims, and those are in the amount of $127,372.42. And yesterday, you received an email with current claims in the amount of $39,834.75, and that brings the total of the claims for approval to $167,207.17. Thank you. Board members, do you have any questions? Ms. Piedmont-Smith? Yes, I'm surprised we only earned $40 in that savings account. <laughs> so a low. million dollars. I mean, that's, I know the rate was low, but I didn't think it was 0 .004. I, yeah, I haven't looked at it very closely, but. Yeah, I, I haven't done the math on it. Um, I mean, the annual APR, or I guess, or the annual uh, interest rate for that savings account is 0.5%. Um, and uh, I said, I mean, we did, uh, you know, uh, did execute the transfer on April the 1st. Um, so we have to go back and look at the statements and uh, verify that it's accurate and there weren't any, uh, any errors in that interest uh, accrual. So it's supposed to earn 0.5% for 12 months. Mm -hmm. So do we divide that by 12 to see what it's supposed to earn per month? Because then it would be right, but I didn't realize that was how it was calculated. I, I would have to go back and look at the terms. I apologize. I don't ha have that in front of me. Um, Penny is nodding. <laughs> yeah, the, the APR would be the annual percentage and so to get the monthly you would divide by 12. Okay yeah. well then it does make sense. It does. Yeah it's just it sad seem, not to see more. <laughs> seems kind of paltry on that kind of investment. Paltry. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's that was a big step for us to start making our money work for us when it's not being used and um, it's only working a little bit. So I think Mayor Hamilton has a question or a comment. Thank you. I couldn't see him. Uh, thanks. Um, so, and welcome, uh, Ms. Martin. Thanks. Um, I'm just looking at the page 24, which has that graphic, uh, which quite dramatically, I gather, shows a transfer of a million dollars in April. Um, and it's explained, but I'm, I'm wondering, the, the point of that graphic is really to talk about the, the reserve balances that we have. Is there a reason we don't count this new account, if I'm reading that right, as not being part of the reserve balances? Uh, you know, I, I suppose that there's not, and I, and I didn't consider that, um, and I suppose the, the, the savings account, um, in essence, is still a part of the operating fund, um, mm -hmm. just held separately from the checking account. So um, yeah. we, we can correct the graph uh, for next month uh, and, and 
keep that yeah. keep that million dollars accounted for in there. I would suggest that's much more descriptive of, of where we are. And in fact, I I would just redo it, not have a dip and then a back up, but but just showing that yeah. Yeah. You know, we we'll, just we'll, moved we'll, it to an interest bearing account or whatever, which is, is right. great. So yeah, yeah. well yeah, we'll we'll just correct the April balance and then carry it forward to May for next month. Thank you. Very good. Because it is um, that savings account is also operating funds. Yes. They are easily available to us when we need them. Okay. Other questions? Let's have a motion then for approval of the claims. Um, I move approval of the claims as presented in our packet in plus what was emailed yesterday for the past month. Second. Second. Questions or comments from board members? We'll have a roll call vote, please. Thomas? Yes. Jones? Yes. Piedmont Smith? Yes. Githens? Sorry, yes. Hamilton? Yes. Munson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, now we will um, move on to the first of two resolutions that we will discuss today. Uh, one concerns uh, an annual uh, endeavor, and that is the landfill financial assurance. And um, Mr. McGlasson, would you like to review your memo and for the board? Uh, uh, certainly. Uh, um, as uh, Ms. Munson mentioned, this uh, an annual um, housekeeping issue that we have to do to satisfy uh, the state's requirement to demonstrate financial assurance uh, for the remaining post-closure period uh, on the landfill. Um, as in years past, we're seeking the board's approval to take this uh, to the county council to have the county make that demonstration on our behalf uh, using the local government financial test option, uh, which is a method taxing entities can use that doesn't require anybody to make any expenditure to purchase an insurance or a bond or something like that to demonstrate that assurance. So, um, and then the, the amount this year's uh, 2,408,944 um, which is a little over $95,000 less than the, the 2.5 plus million that uh, we had to demonstrate last year. So I'll ask a question. Uh, Mr. McGlasson, will the amount continue to uh, decrease year by year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. As, as the, as the, the window shrinks for the close post closure period. The the amount of money necessary to to, to fund it through the end of that closure window uh, decreases. And would you remind us of uh, what calendar that uh, window <laughs> pertains to? Uh, how, the, how many the, years left? It, it's a it's the requirement is a thirty year post closure period. Uh, we were certified closed in uh, two thousand and nine, so we're looking at. 2039 yeah. uh, for the end of that. We will let future boards of directors take care of all that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Um, with this uh, information presented to us, uh, may we have a, a motion? Oh, yes. Regarding um, the resolution. I move approval of resolution 2021-06, Monroe County Landfill Financial Assurance. Second. Okay. Board members, do you have comments or questions? Ms. Piedmont Smith? Yeah, I had a question about the, uh, the attached um, worksheet, uh, page 51 of our packet. Um, so, in the second section, updated 2021 post-closure cost estimate with inflation adjustment. Um, the 30-year plan was at 2.2185, and then the calculations um, uh, you know, with inflation and then considering how many years have already passed, 
bring us to 1,861,741. Um, so then I'm wondering why the financial assurance is for 2.4 million when the cost estimate is at 1.8 million. Am I misunderstanding something there? The, 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 work, the worksheet that you're looking at is a two page worksheet, pages 50 and 51 of the packet. That is for the municipal solid waste landfill permit number 5303. Uh, you have to add to that the worksheet for pages 52 and 53, which is the construction and demolition landfill permit 5305, um, which is 547,000 and change. Uh, those two numbers together get you your $2.4 million figure. Okay, so the landfill is separated from the land what we, yeah, disposal? The, what we, what we difference? call what we call the landfill is is technically two, two. permitted landfills. Um, that we had there was a construction and demolition debris uh, landfill constructed. I, I don't know exactly when that opened off the top of my head before my time, um, but because of because construction and demolition material is a little bit different than household municipal solid waste. There's different requirements for construction and demolition hill, so it's a separate permit. Okay. So there's there's two there there were when the landfill is operating, there were two permits out there depending on the type of waste being brought in by the customer. Okay. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Other questions, comments? We're ready then for a roll call vote. Yithens? Yes. Munson? Yes. Jones? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Piedmont Smith? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Now we have a second resolution. And let's just begin with a with motion to open our discussion of this. I move approval of resolution 2021-07, electronic attendance policy for public meetings. Second. And I'm so happy to turn this over to Mr. McGlasson, <laughs> who, has, who has worked with our legal advisor, Mr. Lee Baker, um, on complying with a new uh, with a change in uh, state requirement. Mr. McGlasson. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this results from um, House Enrolled Act 1437, uh, which made some changes uh, to the open door law um, regarding electronic attendance uh, at public meetings, which is something we've all unfortunately become all too familiar with over the past year or so. Uh, uh, but, but the state, um, you know, re recognizing where we are with COVID um, and how people have moved forward with uh, virtual meetings um, and, and uh, I guess the, the possibility that as things start to move back to normal, you could have uh, meetings in person and still have either members of the body, the governing body or members of the public wishing to attend or participate electronically, uh, making some changes to the open door law to, to allow that to happen. Um, part of the requirement there is that the governing body establish a policy uh, for electronic attendance and participation uh, at those public meetings. So, uh, so that's what this resolution does. Um, as Ms. Munson mentioned, um, did work with uh, Mr. Baker and some other members of the county legal department on the language of this resolution uh, to make sure that we are uh, in compliance with the new requirements. And uh, so if, if if the board wishes uh, when, um, uh, when in-person meetings resume to allow electronic attendance and participation moving forward, this, uh, the policy and this resolution needs to be adopted by the board. Let me, let me ask a question to begin our discussion. Um, is this important for us to um, make a decision on today or should we uh, postpone this? Uh, that's a good question that unfortunately there's not, um, 
a good answer for right now. Um, the, um, the the new requirements of, of the House Enrolled Act 1437 went into effect upon passage. However, they're superseded by an emergency order of the governor, which is currently in effect, uh, but is set to expire uh, at the end of this month. Uh, should the governor between now and the end of the month choose to extend that emergency order, this policy would not be necessary. Uh, but I have. I have I've not heard anything one way or the other on what the governor's plans are with regard to the emergency declaration. But but if the governor did not extend the emergency order, we would be holding a meeting uh, for which we should follow the the new state regulations, correct? Yeah, if if the if the emergency order expires, then mm -hmm. um, in, in essence, vir, you know, the the board would not be allowed to, to continue virtual meetings. They would have to be in person. Doesn't mean that we couldn't meet. It would just mean that, um, that in order to participate in the meeting, board members would have to be present in person. until we adopt a policy um, that allows um, a minority of the, the board members to attend. Is that correct? Uh, it's, to no, attend it's, virtually. A minority to attend virtually, yes. And under, the, under the law and, and under this policy, uh, even with the virtual, the electronic attendance, you still have to have at least 50% of the members of the governing body present in person. Right. So I believe uh, Commissioner Thomas had a question or comment. Yeah, thank you. Uh, more, uh, well, first a comment than a question. Um, uh, just so that um, members of this board are aware, as, as uh, many of you are, all of you may not be, um, we are remodeling the Nat U Hill room and I don't have a date on when that's going to be completed yet, but, but at some point in the very near future, hopefully, we're waiting on some delivery of some items. Um, we're gonna be hosting all of our meetings as a hybrid, in a hybrid format, meaning that we'll continue to use Zoom whether or not all the members are present so that the um, residents of the community can participate more easily in county government uh, and government decisions in general. Um, but I'm wondering maybe if Lee Baker wants to add something to this for clarification. Mm -hmm. If I might. Um, actually, I don't have anything to add to what Tom mentioned. Um, my only concern would be, uh, and it's not really a concern. Uh, I think Tom touched on it that that the governor. I mean, there's there's we, we don't have any insight what his plan is, but it, it, it. I mean, he he could rescind the emergency order, and then then you all would have to convene as a body, uh, to to address what's in front of you today. Um, which, which is fine, but, 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 but you would have to do that uh, and, and could not meet uh, w with less than 50% electronically and the rest in person until you did that. So that, that would be my only concern. I don't have anything beyond that to add. So uh, Ms. Githens? Um, yes, we... We have talked about some of this with the county commissioners and uh, I would like to point out that we could adopt this today and then if we feel like changes need to be made to it later, we have that option. This doesn't mm -hmm. lock, our, lock us into this permanently. Okay, I, be I believe the uh, county council is also uh, going to be considering uh, a, a comparable resolution mm -hmm. for their meetings. City Council as well. Okay. So if you all uh, feel comfortable, then should, uh, do you want to move ahead with adoption of this resolution or do you have other comments? Ms. Thomas. Ms. Munson, if I could just to, to add to follow up on, on what you said that uh, uh, also um, opinion of the county attorney's office would is that the way that um, governing body and um, official action are defined in the open door law, 
uh, the, the requirements of this of the new open door law will also apply to the executive committee and our citizens advisory committee. Uh, so those two bodies will also uh, have to consider adopting a similar policy. Okay. <clears throat> and so each of them will independently um, develop their own resolution. Yeah, but yes. I, I, okay. imagine, I imagine the language will be pretty much identical <clears throat> in each uh, resolution. Okay, very good. So, Ms. Piedmont-Smith? So we can't cover the CAC and the executive committee with this with one resolution? Uh, I, would, would, I, would, I guess I'll defer to Mr. Baker. My understanding was that it, it, the way that the new law says, it says um, the governing body and, and then the way a governing body is defined, that the CAC is legally a governing body, the executive committee, it's legally a governing body. And uh, Mr. Mr. Baker, if you have a, a different opinion to that, I'm open to it. <laughs> I do not, I concur. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or comments from the board? Let me ask, it. oh, Ms. Piedmont Smith. Well, I, I just, I, you know, for the benefit of anybody who doesn't have a packet in front of them, I wonder if either Mr. Baker or Mr. McGlasson could just highlight some of the, the points in this policy for us. I mean, I have it in front of me, but you know, it's too. a public meeting, so. I would be happy to. I'd be happy to read the now therefore section if you'd like me to. Yes. No, please. I was. Well, I was more referring to. Um, I mean, it, it, the now therefore just refers to the this exhibit A. You, you want a summary of what this policy Requires. means for us holding meetings moving forward? Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, it, it, it means that once, once the governor's emergency declaration is rescinded or expires, that if this policy were adopted, um, electronic attendance uh, and participation would be allowed uh, at public meetings of the board of directors uh, under the requirements that at least 50% of the members of the board are present in person and that any board member, um, any board member participating electronically must be seen and heard at the, at the meeting. Um, and then that, uh, that, that the public has, you know, uh, via Zoom or some other platform, the ability uh, to watch and participate in the meeting. Isn't and there also a, a requirement as to how many of um, how many electronic participations are allowed per year? Mr. I, I don't recall that. Yes. Yeah, you can. A, a member can can only. Um, there's no limit on the number for the year, but you can. But a member can attend electronically no, no more than two consecutive meetings. Um, let me see there, let me double check. I think it says a member of the governing body may not attend more than 50% of the right. meetings. That's, that is correct. I, thought. I misspoke, right. but no more than two consecutive meetings uh, um, and then, then the cap for the year. Okay. Thank you for the correction. <laughs> Commissioner Thomas. Yeah, I, I just think it's there's going to have to be a few changes in terms of how we prepare for meetings. Um, every every or, every governing body, you know, to get an attendance, <clears throat> to get a head count before the meeting, to make sure that at least fifty percent plan to attend in person, um, and to track. Obviously, we have to ensure that we continue to take role on every vote, um, and we have to note on the minutes who is attending in person versus who is attending electronically. So yep. uh, so there are gonna have to be some changes that go with this, but it, it, I still think it's worth it to have that flexibility um, because That's people so sometimes do end up out of town or something happens and they can't come in for a meeting that at least allows the opportunity to participate um, in, in Monroe County government or in governing agencies, so. So, Ms. Piedmont-Smith? Oh, I think uh, Penny was ahead of me. 
Uh, well, there, were, there are also specific times when everybody has to be in person, like if we're voting mm -hmm. to uh, raise the taxes or mm -hmm. adopt the budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The budget. There, there are specific types of things for which electronic participation is mm -hmm. not allowed, at least for the board members. But it still allows the public to right. participate electronically. <clears throat> so thank you for bringing that up. That's an important point. So that doesn't mean all budget uh, discussions. It does mean the vote on the budget, however. Correct. The actual vote. OK. Uh, Ms. Piemont Smith. So um, I, I wanted to ask uh, to follow up on what uh, Commissioner Thomas said about the Nat U Hill room. So if we, you know, if the governor does not extend his order and we have to meet in person in June, what, um, where would we meet and does whatever venue is available to us, would it allow people to, like, what's the technology like? Would we be able to see some of our colleagues on a screen and public comment on a screen? Can now, anybody speak to that? Yeah, for clarity, uh, we anticipate that we'll still be, unless something happens, which I hope doesn't happen. Uh, we anticipate the Nat U Hill room will be available. It's just having the technology to set up a hybrid meeting for every meeting where you're incorporating the camera view into the meeting. That may not be in place yet, but that's what I've had conversations with um, our great technical services department. and. They know what's coming and we'll figure it out. So I would I would anticipate that we would continue to plan to meet in Nat U Hill. If anything changes, of course, we'll we'll make sure that we have an appropriate space um, ready to go if something happens. So just as always. Thank, Thank you. you. So we've had uh, discussions from from the board and we don't have uh, great public participation today, but we do have Joseph Winia uh, here to give us a, a report from the CAC, but he can be public now if he would like to make any comments. I just appreciate you sharing your insights, knowing that the CAC is going to have the same discussion next week at our meeting. So it's okay. good to have a precedence. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any further uh, discussion or comments? We'll turn to a roll call vote then. Munson? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Piedmont Smith? Yes. Githams? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. So thank you, everyone. Uh, Now's our, our monthly uh, report about the uh, solid waste management plan. And Mr. McGlasson, would you like to lead this, please? Uh, I, I can. I don't have, have much of an update. Uh, you know, this month, still kind of digesting and processing everything from the joint meeting. Um, but uh, did would highlight from the memo, um, you know, that. Uh, after you know, after after the survey being available uh, online for one week, um, did did have over 150 online surveys completed. Um, unfortunately, the majority of those uh, did appear to be from City of Bloomington residents. Not that we don't want uh, their input uh, in the survey, but would like to have a a little broader um, uh, you know field of, of representation, I guess. Um, but uh, and hopefully to help with that, the class did um, develop a, a QR code and a, a small poster with that on it that we did uh, get copies uh, out, uh, distributed and posted at all of our recycling centers. Uh, so hopefully with those being out at the rural sites, that'll increase some of the participation outside the city of Bloomington. Mm -hmm. So other than that, um, kind of been, been working on digesting everything from the joint meeting, um, starting to starting to, I guess, to try to, for my purposes and, and hopefully be of use, put together uh, some sort of a, of a draft layout of the actual updated plan. 
uh, that the CAC and the board can uh, can have and work from. Um, and I was, you know, thinking of, uh, you know, our original timeline of trying to have something uh, for the board to consider in July. Okay, very good. Questions about the, the plan update? All right. Moving on, we will turn to the CAC report. And they certainly have something to report because they've been very active with uh, the plan update. Indeed. Um, I will say that I don't have anything in addition to what was provided in the activity report. There hasn't been any exchanges within the CAC since. Um, I do have a plan to reach out to the CAC following this meeting to just make sure that everyone has all of the latest information and then to also help to coordinate <clears throat> a plan for going forward for providing a deliverable version of all of the things that we've discussed so far and um, to prepare for next week's meeting where those things will, um, I guess, be finalized in order to keep on target with our July timeframe for having something presentable for the board to vote on. Good. Are there any questions on the content that was provided in the report? No, but thank you. Yes, Ms. Giffins has it. It's has not a question. question, but I wanted to thank the CAC for um, doing uh, one of the road cleanups. Yeah. That was really <laughs> impressive. Thank you. Indeed, yes. We were actually solicited to do so by um, this resident request because of the state that the roads were in and their need for mm -hmm. upkeep for the part that we adopted. So just yeah. following through on things we've committed to. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I I'd like to add a comment that I thought the uh, joint meeting of the board and the CAC regarding uh, this plan update discussions was, was a productive meeting and I appreciated everybody uh, attending that. Thank you. So, well, without further uh, information from CAC, let's turn to department reports. Uh, yeah, I just um, a, a couple of things I did want to highlight. Um, just uh, the last bullet point and the general updates of my memo that, uh, that within uh, a month of passing the uh, COVID vaccination benefit uh, policy, um, we have uh, paid that benefit to half of our staff. So yes, um, granted, granted a number of them were already vaccinated before we uh, we, we did pass the benefit, but. Uh, but, but we're glad to see that that our employees are getting vaccinated and protecting themselves against that and uh, happy to pay that benefit uh, to get that achieved. Um, uh, just and then also um, uh, the first bullet point on the second page, Senate Enrolled Act 332, we've mentioned that a um, few times, that was legislation we've been watching uh, that did pass and uh, it basically um, makes it a little easier for us to do some of our uh, public notice when we have to notice mm -hmm. more than one time. Um, first notice has to be published in a local newspaper, but any subsequent notices uh, can be done on, on our official website. Um, so that reduce a little bit of cost and make it a little bit easier to get those additional notices out. So, uh, and then lastly, because I know that um, some of you were, were, were interested in watching this as we went through it, um, uh, we did uh, with the, the Earth Day promotion doing the compost bins and rain barrels. Um, we did uh, sell a total of 80 <coughs> rain barrels uh, and, and 60 compost bins um, through that program. And I think, um, uh, and then on, we've sold three or four of each additional since that uh, was completed uh, through the online web orders uh, as well. So, um, pretty pleased with those numbers, uh, much better uh, than what we did uh, with the event last year and are certainly thankful to uh, Lauren Travis and the city's economic and sustainable development department for partnering with mm -hmm. us and, and helping expanding our, our reach um, to get those available to people. Good. So thank you very much. Let's move on now to uh, Scott Morgan's report. 
Good afternoon. Um, first thing I want to mention is the gravel work at the sites is scheduled for next Tuesday and Thursday with each day receiving two sites. So we should have everything wrapped up by uh, the close of business on Thursday. And then the last thing I want to mention is the, in my spreadsheets for March, you will notice a major uh, uptick from February. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're really pleased with that. And we're hoping to see a, an increase um, in, in April. So um, it's good to see some, some positive numbers. So mm -hmm. you'll see what uh, April looks like at this point. Good. Thank you. Any questions you. for Ms. Mr. Morgan? Okay, let's turn to Mr. Paulson's report. Sorry, I had to turn my sound on there. Um, yeah, the only thing uh, outside of what you guys see, see in that report is just uh, uh, Mary Beth and I from started the groundwater on Friday, uh, April 30th. And we got done with, officially done with the groundwater sampling for May today when I uh, shipped all the rental equipment back to their prospective places. So everything went pretty good. Weather was good. Um, just a pretty, pretty long, challenging uh, week and a half or so of leaving early, getting home late kind of stuff. But it's all done. Um, and now we're trying to catch up from two weeks of being out in the in a field, basically, to... Mary Beth is catching up on cases and I'm trying to get caught up helping her out with getting uh, roadside things taken care of. And uh, once again, we're extremely thankful for our volunteers uh, beyond just the super thankful for our uh, adopter road people that have continued to, those numbers are going up slowly as people are getting more comfortable getting back into uh, some kind of semblance of stuff. And then we've just got, um, three individuals that have just taken it upon themselves that they're, they like walking the streets and walking roads and picking up trash and calling us. So we're, we're, we're good with that. So um, big, thank you. Big, big thank you to those people. So that's kind of it. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Any questions or comments? All right, then let's uh, open our meeting for any public comment. And we do have one more person from the public uh, in attendance. Maybe we'll have a public comment. Mr. Winia, your hand is up. Indeed, I did just wanna take the opportunity to also say thank you to the board members who participated in the joint CAC meeting. That was, I agreed with um, your remark, Ms. Munson, that it was very productive and very valuable and something that I've still been reflecting on too. Um, following the meeting in terms of how to make the best recommendations possible. So thank you very much, everyone who participated. Thank you. Uh, other public comment? Then let's turn to uh, comments from uh, directors. Anyone wish to make a closing comment for today? Ms. Gissens. Yeah, I was going to ask where the QR codes are, are posted for the survey. Um, I've been out to both Ellettsville and um, Bethel Lane sites recently because we're remodeling something mm -hmm. in our house. And um, I didn't, the QR codes weren't obvious to me. So, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I can go check them again. I mean, we, we put them up, um, you know, on, on the hoppers for um, the cardboard and the plastic. Um, and it, was, and it it was not exactly the same spots at every site. Um, it depends, you know, what what options I have. Uh, like at Ellettsville, there's one um, on the post to the lean to um, by where the oil used oil bin is. Um, but uh, you know, at the other sites, there's you know, not not a good posting spot next to those uh, bins. Um, although I think maybe Bethel Lane, I, I did as well. Um, 
but I, I, I apologize. I forget off the top of my head exactly where at each site they are, but we can certainly uh, get more of those available. A print, I can make more copies um, and, and get out and make sure that they're, you know, still posted and, and adequately posted and more visible. Uh, certainly do that. Um, and I, I guess we're missed during my report uh, for anybody that's watching, um, you know, it, uh, we certainly are, are interested in getting as much participation from county web uh, county residents as we can. Uh, there is um, there is a link uh, a link to the survey uh, at the top of each page on the district's website. Uh, there's a link to the survey pinned um, at the top of our Facebook page, um, and uh, the. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't looked. Uh, the county did get that posted um, for us uh, under their news feed. Um, pull that up and, uh, and it, it, it is still at the top of the recent news feed on the county's home website. I've not checked, um, did work with uh, Mr. Dietz at City IT and they were going to work to get it um, out on the city website, but it did not get confirmation honestly have not had a chance to go look at their website for that. Um, but uh, we're certainly appreciative of the city and the county's uh, efforts to, to help us get the word out uh, on that survey. Um, and uh, if anybody has trouble finding it, by all means, uh, you know, call the district at 812-349-2020 and, and we'll get you directed to it one way or another. Very good. I would like to mention that uh, Earthkeepers has provided an incentive uh, for the uh, survey. And would you like to describe that, Mr. McGlasson? Uh, I, I can, or if uh, Mr. Conway from the CAC, who is uh, part of the Earthkeepers operation, wants to do that since he's here, I'll defer to him. But Let's see if he unmutes himself. <laughs> but if, if he's not going to, uh, oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. Sorry, new, new computer technical difficulties. <laughs> so, yes, we, we are offering a, a, a um, uh, we're raffling off uh, free subscriptions for, I think it's, is it three weeks, Tom? Uh, uh, three I months, I believe. Three months. Three months. Oh, yeah, yeah, a full quarter. That's right. Yeah, we're raffling off a full quarter. Uh, so that people that participate, uh, they they get logged in the system, and then we'll be making that raffle. So there is an incentive to get a full quarter's worth of service to try out our drop off and uh, see what all the buzz is about. Very good, thank you. And then, uh, and then, uh, Ryan, just to clarify, I mean, and that uh, that that service gives them access to whatever is convenient for them, but it would be the drop off at the district facilities, uh, but that does not in does, does it also include your drop off at Blooming Foods? You have you have a handful of other ones around the community as well. Is that any of those that's most convenient for them or is it just the district locations? We're trying to highlight the district locations specifically, but if somebody really, uh, it's, it's, if, that, if that's really too far for somebody, we could probably work out another location too. Okay. So very good, thank you. Ms. Piedmont-Smith. Yeah, I wanted to um, just, I wanted to welcome Kathy Martin again as our new controller and uh, glad to have you on the team. And um, I wanted to thank Lee and Mary Beth for uh, all their hard work for the May groundwater sampling. Um, another thank you to the CAC, which I think is doing a, an excellent job um, crafting our uh, new uh, waste management plan. So thank you for all of your organization and work. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about the survey being on the city's website, but I know it went out on um, the housing and neighborhood development newsletter. And so I forwarded it to um, uh, the neighborhoods, uh, well, the one neighborhood listserv that uh, is active in my particular district. Um, and I know that they've forwarded it on to some other neighborhood listservs. So um, I know you want county people, but city people are county people. Let's remember that. <laughs> Um, and then I just wanted to remind, because I was reminding myself and just uh, kind of throw it out there, because normally our executive committee meeting would be uh, on the Monday, the week before 
the next board meeting, but since that's mm -hmm. Memorial Day, our executive committee is meeting on May 28th, the Friday, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Well, if there are no further comments, I would add some more thank yous before we close, and that is uh, to uh, our TSD Technical Services Department for handling uh, our communications, and also to CATS, which uh, uh, extends our communications uh, far beyond our one little Zoom chat. I would, like to associate, I would like to associate myself intimately with all of those thank yous. Those are very good. <laughs> so, well done. Yeah. So on behalf of everyone on this board, thank you. So our next meeting of, um, of the board will be June 10th. Same time, but we don't know about place yet. And uh, We'll stay in touch, and um, I think there'll be lots of communications about how meetings will be handled uh, once we know more. So without further business, we are adjourned until then. Thank you. <laughs>